Okay, so now we're going to go on to EQ. Now this is a really, really important step. And we might have to do multiple EQs, but you always want to set up an EQ right after that pitch correction. Okay, so I have kind of what I've set up here. Uh, we're going to go through each of these little um, sections separately. But first I'm going to turn them all off. Okay, so first let's talk about the different parts of the EQ plugin. Now, when I play this, you try to escape your faith in Wade. It's actually going to show that EQ response. It's showing you how the raw signal is coming in at all the various frequency ranges. Okay, so always have that analyzer on. It's down here in the bottom left. You can turn it on pre or post. I like post. So that's going to show me how that response is changing once I make the necessary uh, cuts or boosts. So now let's go ahead and talk about what it means to cut and boost EQ. So your first option here is called a low cut filter or a high pass. You'll hear it called either one. And it is a sloped filter where it's actually going to just cut everything below a certain frequency range at a certain slope. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Now I had brought it up all the way to 200. So let's talk about why that is. I'm going to play it and show you where that bass frequency response is coming in from my raw signal. You try to escape your faith and wade into the woods. So I'm starting to see my first strong signal around 100. Okay, now we would call that a fundamental frequency. That is like that very strong lowest frequency signal and it's acting as like the body of the whatever sound it is, in this case the vocals. Okay, now the fundamental frequency is very important, however it also comes with it uh, harmonics at every multiple of itself. So if we have a fundamental frequency at 100 hertz, that means we have a pretty strong harmonic at 200, somewhat weaker harmonic at 400, somewhat weaker harmonic at 800, you know the rest. So it goes all the way through the multiples of 100. So like I was saying, we have that fundamental frequency is giving this a ton of body. Uh, however, those bass frequencies around 100 and lower, they kind of belong to certain parts of the mix. So if you have a bass guitar or a bass drum, something like that, uh, then that's kind of where that needs to fit in and you don't want too many things competing with it because things that are that low on the EQ distribution take up a lot of space and you don't really want more than a couple things living down there. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play this again and I'm going to pull that high cut or sorry that low cut filter all the way up uh, until it sounds like it's still not thinning out but it's um, got a lot of body still. You try to escape your faith in Wade into the woods. So this is not affecting it at all. Your faith in Wade into the woods. Still not affecting it. Try to escape your faith in Wade into the woods. So that did thin it out a tiny bit. And the um, make or break is going to come from listening to this with everything else. And I'm going to let you listen to it with the mix with the cut at 200 and with the cut at 100. Here is 100. You try to escape your faith and way into the woods. Okay, sounds pretty good. Um, it does sound very up close. It sounds like, um, you know, I'm right next to you because my full vocal is present uh, and it sounds like I'm just talking to you in a room and not necessarily trying to fit in with all these other things happening. Now if I bring it up to 200, you're going to notice a tiny bit of a difference. Now it's thinner on its own, but you're not really going to notice it that much when it's in with everything else, and it's going to blend in more. You try to escape your faith and way into the woods. There you go. Okay, so we have our low cut set at this point. Okay, so that's our low cut. Uh, now this next one is called a shelf. That's a low shelf filter. And I'm not using that here. A low shelf actually boosts or cuts everything 
um, you know, at an equal volume the whole way below, uh, you know, the point at which you place it. So if I did this, it would boost everything um, below 100 at an equal rate. Okay, so don't really want a low shelf in this case. We want to actually cut at, at a slope pretty definitively here at 200. Okay, that brings us to our four notch filters that this EQ gives us. So the notch filters, those are where you're going to make very specific cuts or boosts to certain ranges of EQ. Okay, now um, what I would recommend, there's a kind of a certain um, order of operations here that I would follow. I would say that you want to make cuts before you make any boosts. Okay, and that's just because you want to take care of any problem things before you start accentuating certain aspects of the sound. Okay, so let's take this first notch filter. Okay, so I set this at 370 because there is um, this certain aspect of room noise that sounds very tinny. It's almost like you're speaking into a styrofoam cup or listening through a seashell if you've ever done that. Alright, so let's talk about this one specific range of small reverb sound that you want to take out. Now what you want to do to find the problematic zones of EQ reduction is you want to actually start with a boost. Pretty loud one too, okay? And you're going to replay a certain section and you're just going to kind of fan that across a certain area and find anything that just sounds grating to your ear or ugly, okay? Now we're listening for some tinniness in this area. You try to escape. And you definitely want to solo it out as well. So let's solo this channel. You try to escape your faith and wade into the woods. So you hear when I got to 370 there. You try to escape your faith and wade. It sounded tinny, but also kind of taxing on your ears. It's like that one harmonic or that one little slice is like a very big contributor to like those piercing sounds and you want to get out anything that's piercing because it is going to come out later once you compress and do some of that other stuff. So that 370 piercing sound uh, I want to reduce. Now when you reduce you want to do it pretty narrowly. You want a narrow reduction and that is your Q value down here. That's this number at the very bottom. Now two I would say is a pretty narrow reduction. Uh, you don't really want to go anything over four because at that point it's very, it's like a very, very small section that's not even going to make a huge difference. And you can cut more than you can boost. Okay, so I'm going to put this um, probably at about six decibels. Now you don't really ever want to cut more than eight, I would say. Eight is a pretty strong cut unless you're dealing with like a huge problem with like electrical signal or something that you need to take out this is the way to go. Okay, so we've got a cut at 370. My next one is here at 500. Okay, now around 500 you usually can get kind of a uh, eh, eh sound from the voice and if you have too many harmonies layered uh, that aren't taking care of this 500 eh sound, you're definitely going to hear it and it's going to sound very crackly in any of your playback systems. So let's boost this 500 and kind of see where that, uh, what that sounds like, what to look for when you're searching for it. You try to escape your faith and wade into the woods. You try to escape your faith and wade into the woods. You try to escape your faith and wade into the woods. So I'm actually seeing it a little above 500 now that I've taken a closer look. Um, you'll hear at the very end of the line especially, you get another piercing echoey sound that you want taken out. So we're going to move it over to 540. And this one is a little harsher. It's a little less of an annoying tinny sound and a little more of an actual hurting the ears tinny sound. So you want to go ahead and reduce that to the max, 8 dB. And I've got it all the way to the most narrow Q value as well because it's a very small section that we want to reduce. Okay, so we've taken care of that more taxing small reverb sound. And again, we're just making cuts first. Anything that sounds um, unpleasant, we want to take out. So now we have our third cut here that I've made. 1500 at negative 6. OK, 
Okay, now let's go ahead and, you know, kind of start as if we were doing this from scratch. And let's kind of boost across this range and see if we find anything that's hurting the ears. You try to escape your fate then wade into the woods. All that sounded pretty good. You try to escape your fate then wade into the woods. So I actually didn't hear much that was that bad going through here a second time. I guess I was probably li listening to another part of the verse. And that's a good actually tip to not just stick with a small section for the purposes of this tutorial. You should listen to multiple sections and retest your EQ because different things that you say will have a different impact on your EQ and you might have to tailor it to a more wide variety of situations. So uh, one thing I did slightly hear something here at 1500. So I probably just want to reduce that by a little bit. Probably not the 6 dB that I had initially. I think 4 is plenty. And let's narrow the Q value as well, probably to four, because it really wasn't that big of a deal. And our final cut, um, this is actually a very important one. You'll see that's why I've got it uh, minus eight dB. This is an area that you'll see a lot of people online say that you should boost, because 3000 hertz is an area that our ears are really attuned to hearing um, like really specific pronunciations uh, were attuned to hearing them even at quiet volumes at 3000 hertz. And so our ears very sensitive to sounds at that range. And that's for some reason a reason why people think you should boost that. However, boosting that is just making your ears like overly exposed to this really sensitive area and it can hurt really bad. So let me boost this 2700 and kind of show you what that would sound like. You try to escape your fate then wade into the woods. You try to escape. Your fate then wade into the woods. So you kind of only hear it when I'm speaking more loudly, when I'm singing more loudly. I'm actually going to move it over to 2750 because that's where it hurt the most. But you kind of hear that's like really, really piercing in your ears uh, and you don't want to be overly exposed to that. So I would bring that down to the max and actually have a relatively wide Q value on it as well. So that's why I've got the Q value of two there. And then finally, the one boost I would really suggest for vocals, if you're not boosting something here in the bass to kind of uh, up the body of the vocals, and I would only recommend that if you don't have a ton of other instrumentation going on, a ton of other low end instrumentation especially, uh, then I would only boost what we call the brightness of the vocals. And that's everything over 5,000 hertz. Okay, and a very subtle one as well. 2 dB for most boosts, 2 to 4 dB is kind of the range you want to boost at. Uh, cuts can be more severe. And um, I'm just boosting everything over 5K at a flat rate with this high shelf filter. Same as the low shelf, but everything above a certain point. Okay, and the high cut, I wouldn't recommend using in this case. High cuts are really only for situations where you want to add a pretty decent high cut filter and get a more old timey sound like this. You try to escape your fate then wade into the woods. So that sounds more like, uh, I guess, like closer to old time radio and stuff like that. So you don't want a high cut in this case. Uh, and I just boosted this brightness. I'm going to boost it a lot so you can hear kind of what it's accentuating. You try to escape your fate then wait into the woods. So the only reason I would only bring it up two decibels is because you get a lot of S sounds and a lot of really sensitive sounds. Again, just kind of like the 3000 boost would do. Um, however, in this case, uh, it's less extreme above 5000 and it's just kind of making your voice cut through all the other instrumentation more easily. So there we have it. That's how I would approach EQing vocals.